So check that out. This landscape looks great. We got our light reflecting off the water that's moving. Hey everyone, today in this video, we're gonna be checking out the Amazon Fire TV TV. This is a 43 inch 4K smart TV with Amazon's Fire TV built in and we have our Alexa remote control. If you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the retail box and packaging right here. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, you can see all the accessories on the table and the TV itself is behind me right here. You may notice we have two pieces of product literature. The first one in white has our safety information. Next up, you can see we have our user guide and manual walking us through everything we need to know about this television from setup to stand installation or wall mounting, all the ports and features that this TV has, as well as general operation, on-screen setup instructions. Then we have our tips and tricks in troubleshooting section. Next up, you can see we have our included remote control. This is a really nice remote. It's slim, it's lightweight. We have our Alexa button built in. Then you can see down at the bottom, we have four popular streaming apps. We have Prime Video, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu with the Fire TV logo and branding. Flipping it around, we can go ahead, we can remove the cover to reveal the slot to install two AAA batteries. Don't worry, those batteries are included. You can see them right here. They even have Amazon's own branding on them, which is great. Next, we have our included power cable, four screws for the two feet for the stand. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the TV up close. Here's the TV up close, check it out. Everything looks great. We have the plastic off of it. We still have a couple of pieces of plastic all throughout that we need to peel off. Keep in mind, this is a 43 inch TV and that's measured diagonally. I think this is a really good size for a television in my opinion. So you can see it from the front right here. Let's look at it from the side profile so you can get an idea for how thick this television is. Keep in mind, it's pretty lightweight as well. So it's easy to move around. So check that out, thinner at the top and down the sides, thicker at the bottom and in the center. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the back and all of our different options that we have to connect our devices. So first up on the back, you can see if we're looking at the TV on the right hand side, we have our AC in for our power. Now you can see all the options we have on the left side. So we have an ethernet port if you wanna have a hardwired internet connection. This also supports Wi-Fi if you wanna use a wireless connection. Next, we have four HDMI ports with the fourth one supporting eARC. Then you can see we have our coax connector if you want to connect an antenna or cable. Then we have our USB port followed by an IR emitter. Then we have our headphone jack and optical audio port. And next up, you can see in the very back right here, we have our Visa mount option right here. I believe this one's 300 by 300 millimeters. Lastly, I wanted to show you the very bottom of the TV. You may notice there are no buttons, no power button, channel, volume, or anything else. So you'll be using the remote control. Now it's time to get the base installed. Installation's really simple and straightforward. Both of the legs are identical to each other. You can see up at the top right here, they each have a different shape. So they're only gonna fit one way, if that makes sense. So you can see they're gonna fit just like this. If we try it this way, they're not going to fit, but you can use them on either side, right? So let's go ahead, let's line it up. Got the bigger hole there and the smaller hole there. It's gonna drop right in. Now you're gonna take two of those included screws, grab a Phillips head screwdriver and tighten them down. So there we go. You can see we got one side installed right here. Repeat the same steps and process on the other side. All right, so check it out. You can see we have the stand fully assembled right here. Everything looks really nice. Now let's go ahead, let's peel off the plastic, plug in the power cord and set this up. Also, I stand corrected. There is a power button right underneath the indicator right here tucked in the back. I don't know how I didn't see that. I thought that was unusual. That I didn't even have a power button. Good news is you do have a power button you can use to turn on and off the TV, but everything else will be controlled with the remote control. So once you power it on, this is gonna be the screen you're gonna be at. We have a little chime too that's playing in the background every couple of seconds. So the first thing you have to do is choose your language. So let's go ahead, let's select English. Now we can go ahead, we can choose store use or we can set up with our own account. Most of you are probably buying this to actually use, not to display in a store. So let's select continue. Now it's gonna scan for Wi-Fi networks. So you can see we have different networks that we can choose right here. So go ahead, select your network. Our connection was successful and now it's working on checking for updates. 
and you can see currently it's getting our TV up to date. Our updates just finished. Now we're at this screen where it prompts us to sign in with our Amazon account. So obviously if you have an account, you're gonna sign in here. If you don't, you're gonna create an account. So we just signed into our account. There's a couple different ways you can sign in, which is really cool. We did the QR code option that was really seamless and simple. You may get a couple extra prompts if you're already a Fire TV user. Then you'll be at a screen like this where it allows us to either enable or disable parental controls. Choose the option that you want. Next, we're prompted to choose our streaming services so we can either get started or select no thanks. Keep in mind, everything is free to add, but some will require payment for full access. So I'm gonna select a couple of popular streaming services that I want on this TV. So Paramount Plus, Hulu, Disney Plus, Let's keep going over. Do we want anything else really quickly? We'll do ESPN. That's cool. You can even do TikTok, a couple of kids things. So let's go ahead. That's going to be all that we want right now. So let's go on to the next section right here. So they're going to prompt us with what's going to be added to our screen. Select finish. And now you can see we have our welcome screen right here. Now we can scan for TV channels. If we're gonna connect this to an antenna, you can do that. We're not gonna do that right now. And now you can see we can set up additional profiles depending on who's watching our TV. And here we go. We're now into the main home screen of our Fire TV. Let's go over this in more detail. So at the center of the screen, you can see we basically have our main navigational menu right here. So we're on the home icon. We can go to the left. We can bring up our search bar. We can browse by different tile categories or recommended categories directly from Amazon. To the left, you can see we have our input options. Again, four HDMI inputs, an antenna, and a media player if you want to connect a USB device. Then you can see our profile right here. We can add additional profiles. Then we have our live TV section. You can see we have a TV guide. We can browse the content. We can also see sponsored content, featured live TV apps right here. Keep in mind, most of these will require a subscription. So you can see some breaking news options. Our free TV right here. Amazon live shopping is also free to watch, which is pretty cool. So you can see some of those options for the current live streamers. Here's our free TV channels. Then we have our added Prime video channels, if we want to add those. Then we have additional options, our live TV sources we can customize, our TV guide, our favorites, parental controls, a channel scan if we want to connect an antenna, and we have additional settings right here for our live TV. So really quickly, let me show you the guide. Here's the guide. Check it out. You can see we can watch Modern Marvels right now. A couple different shows, depending on what you're after. A lot from the History Channel. Some presented by Lifetime. So you get the idea right here, just choose what you want, just like you're watching cable TV, pretty cool. Now let's go back home, hit the home button again. Then we have our stuff, so we can save stuff right here and bookmark it. Then you can see we have all of our different apps right here that we have downloaded. So yours will look different depending on what you download. We have our internet, you can see our free TV app, we have Netflix, Prime Video, we can select this and you can see we can view all of our apps right here. So again, that's gonna be our apps that show up on screen and we can press the menu button. And you can see we have our options to move them to the front, hide them. So you can select which ones you want to showcase right there on your TV. We'll go back. Here's the app store too if you wanna browse or download more apps. Again, you can search. We have our app library. Sort by installed or not installed. Then you can see featured apps, spotlight for certain ones, sponsored app bundles. You get the idea here. A lot of sports apps. No cable required, but you will have to have a subscription for most, if not all of these. We have our Lex enabled apps, which is pretty cool. Recommended for you. Some gaming apps, which is fun hot new releases, so you get the idea right there. Very typical of your app store, maybe like on your iOS or Android device. Let's go back up. Let's head home. Now we'll go all the way over. We can look at our settings gear icon right here. So check it out, this brings up our device settings. You can access your inputs again. 
We have notifications, account and profile settings, our network if we need to change that, display and sounds, our applications, equipment control, live TV controllers and Bluetooth devices, our Alexa settings, our preferences, our sleep timer, device and software, accessibility, and our help section. So really nice, clean, simple layout, easy to navigate to get to whatever setting you need to change. We're not gonna click on every tile here, but I did wanna show you the display and sound settings. So let's go ahead, let's go into that. First up, you can see we have our picture settings here, so we can long press the home button from anywhere to access our picture settings. Keep in mind, this is input specific. Then we have our sound settings, so it follows a very similar pattern. We can press the settings button from anywhere to get access to our audio settings. Next, we have our Apple AirPlay and HomeKit settings, so you can stream from your Apple devices. We have our power controls, audio output. We can enable display mirroring if you want. Navigation sounds, we can turn that on or off. Screen saver, and then our HDMI CEC device control. So depending on the device and if it's compatible, you can set that up right here as well to choose if you want to allow devices playback, navigation, and powering on and off. So all those settings can be found right within the display and sounds tile in our settings. Back at the home screen, you can see we can get to the settings just by pressing the settings gear icon on our remote control. And basically it gives us a little mini sub quick access menu to the most popular settings and features that you would want. So we have our channel guide, our inputs, display mirroring, our apps, sleep timer, picture and sound settings right there, literally at your fingertips with the remote control. And if all that's still too much for you, don't forget this has a full Alexa integration. So we're gonna try out a couple of different Alexa commands and you can see the TV even shows us things that we should try. So we can ask it questions, check your calendar, control music, control smart home devices, control the volume, control video with your voice, discover music, find content. You get the idea here, check it out. You have so many different options. We can get weather updates, go to the movies, hear the news. You get the idea here, tons of commands and things we can request from our TV, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead, let's try it out right here. So let's hold down the remote. Unmute Fire TV. There we go, so it unmuted it. Change Fire TV volume to 25. There we go. I mean, look at how instantaneous that is. I feel like it's really cool. Like I'm doing a little recording or something, like a little uh, dictation. So let's go ahead. So what's the weather? Currently, in Amelia, it's 83 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly cloudy skies. You can expect more of the same today, with a high of 84 degrees and a low of 67 degrees. Would you also like the current humidity? Yes. Currently, the humidity is 62%. So cool, guys. That's awesome. Now let's go ahead. Let's have a little bit more fun right here. Let's see if we can pull up a streaming app. Open YouTube. All right, check that out. It brought up YouTube for us. It's the last screen we were on in YouTube too, which is nice. So check that out. Very fast, fluid, and responsive, and super convenient, easy to use. And honestly, it's much better than navigating with even the remote control and the Fire TV operating system. It's super convenient just to go ahead, issue voice commands, and get near instantaneous results. Now let's see what it's like to stream some content on this TV. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can browse down below, select the program you want. We can also press the TV guide button. We can see our free TV. So we have a couple different options here. So let's keep browsing. Let's have some fun. Let's see what's on. So a lot of different options for us right here. Let's pull up the prices right. This is fun. So you can see, this is from the Bob Barker era. So obviously it's not gonna be 4K. This is awesome. Free TV's the best. All right, let's go back. You can see if we press the back button, it gives us some additional options. So let's pull up Judy Justice right here. Picture quality looks great here in person. Keep in mind, you're watching a camera on the screen, so it probably won't look as good. But man, they look great. So you can see that, and let's go back. You can see there's trending movies, things like that. Let's do one more right here. 
Looks like we got Dog the Bounty Hunter. Again, same thing. This is older content, so it's not going to fill the screen at 4K. C-R-U-Z. You got a D-O-V on him. And now let's go home. Let's try streaming some content from YouTube. Now we have a 4K video pulled up on YouTube. This is the song Backseat Broken off the album Golden Hour by Music Chef. Not only are we going to look and watch and see how the image quality is, we're also going to listen in. I'll adjust the volume periodically throughout so you can get a sample for how good or bad the speakers are with this TV. So check that out. This landscape looks great. We got our light reflecting off the water that's moving. Even looking at it off to the side, besides the expected glare, the colors don't distort or change or anything like that. Just like if I was looking at it head on like you. And keep in mind you have a camera on the screen so it's always gonna look better in person. Let's turn the volume up. Currently you can see we're at 25. Let's go up to 50. This TV actually has bass. I like it. Wow. All right. Let's go to 75. budget television for sure hands down not even close now it's time to take a look at a couple different picture mode settings right here so first up we have standard mode then we can select movie mode and you can see what it's going to look like right here followed by our dynamic mode sport mode didn't even see a change there now let's look at game then we have pc you can see how that's changed. Then we also have a custom setting. You may notice half the screen is still kind of blocked out right here. That's because we have our menu pulled up. That'll go away once we exit out of this. But let's cycle through those one more time. We got standard. I really like standard mode a lot. We got movie mode. You can see how that looks. It does change the image quality. Just be focusing on this side of the screen. Then we have dynamic. Not bad either. Sport, Gain, then our PC option. That really puts a hue and a tint to it, in my opinion. Then we have the custom settings. So let's go back one step. You can see for custom, the different options we have, we can adjust the backlight, our dynamic backlight, our color saturation, our scene settings. We have advanced settings right here too. Let's select that and you can see what we're able to tweak. So if you really want to nerd out on this stuff, you could select custom mode and change it however you see fit. So there's a lot of options here. So you have a lot of controls within that custom setting. For me personally, I really like just the standard mode. I think they do a really good job. So typically that's what I find myself leaving it in when I'm consuming all types of content. In case you're wondering, you can browse the internet with this Fire TV, which is really cool. So make sure you have the internet app downloaded. Go ahead, open it up. You can see ours keeps taking us to Bing, but you can go up here. Yours will probably show this menu first where we have our bookmarks. You can see some trending videos. We have all of our settings down here too. You can see your browsing history. You can customize the menu, adjust the cursor speed. We have additional settings here. So for me, I wanna change our search engine default from Bing to Google. So you can see, let's scroll down here. It's gonna be under advanced settings. Here it is right there. We want Google, but you have a couple different options there. And then we have site settings. So you can see if you wanna tweak any of this, you can. And then we have some information about the Silk web browser. So let's go back. Let's go back here. And then you can see we can search. So let's go ahead, let's search for, just for fun, let's search Digital David. Let's see what comes up.
I know I could be using voice control too, but I thought this would be more fun just to get a feel too for how quick everything is. Not too bad to navigate. Hey, Digital David Amazon Live. That's pretty cool. Let's just do, um, there we go. Let's search it. All right, did pull up the Amazon Live. No big deal there. But you can see we got, obviously, our search results just like on Google. That's pretty cool. So you can see, let's see if it loads. Let's load the Amazon page. Pretty fast, too. Hey, that's pretty neat. So check that out. That's cool. Just like you're regularly browsing the web. Pretty responsive, too. can also just pull up YouTube videos, right? Things like that. See social media accounts, all the things you'd expect, like a regular Google search, appear to be just as normal on the Fire TV. Now let's talk about some of the display settings for this TV. We do get true full 4K, it's 3840 by 2160p. The refresh rate is 60 hertz, so keep that in mind. That's very typical with budget-friendly televisions like this, and we have 8-bit for our color. So now you're looking at the UFO test on our Fire TV. This is one of my favorite tests to conduct. So with this test, we see different FPS values, so frames per second, moving the UFO across the screen. So at the bottom, we have 15 FPS, then we double to 30 FPS in the center, and then at the top, we have 60 FPS. So Again, 60 FPS at 60 hertz, that's what you're seeing at the top. And basically that shows you that it does matter the amount of FPS you can push with your system and the refresh rate. Those really go hand in hand. The higher both of those values can be, you can see the smoother the image quality that really matters mostly with any sort of movement and motion. Think first person shooters, things along those lines. You want to be able to have a higher and better performing system and you can see it really makes a difference. And if this was 60 jumping up to 120 at 120 hertz, you would see a pretty substantial improvement again. Now we're gonna be testing out the input lag. Input lag is the delay between your device and the screen. So let's go ahead, let's see what our results are right here as we measure everything. The lower the better. So you can see our input lag right now is 95.2 milliseconds. Now let's go ahead, let's change the picture mode to the gaming setting and see if that improves. Game mode has been enabled and selected, so let's go ahead, let's see the results now. Check that out, much better, substantially better. So 26.6 milliseconds. If you are gonna be gaming with this television, your best bet is to make sure that you have the game setting enabled. Now keep in mind that's still a lot higher than what you get from a gaming monitor or PC. Usually when I'm measuring those, they come in somewhere between one and 1 1.5 milliseconds. Now you can see I downloaded a free driving game. This is Asphalt 8 that we're gonna play on the TV for a couple of seconds so you guys can see how everything looks. But check this out, pretty cool, right? Again, this is a free app that I've downloaded. So you can see how it performs with the TV. Not too shabby if you ask me. Do a little barrel roll there, that's pretty cool. We'll take it. Oh, we just crashed, got wrecked. It's pretty fun even just driving with the remote control. Not too bad. Another barrel roll. All right. So you get the idea here. It's doing a decent job. Better than I guess I would have thought since again, this has to process all those graphics too. We got a lot of detail here. A lot of movement, motion, tons of graphics. This is pretty graphics intensive if you ask me.
But pretty cool, this is your Asphalt 8 sample. Again, just a free app you can download if you want to game directly on the TV. Now we have our Sony PlayStation 5 connected to the Fire TV. So for your next gen consoles with this particular TV, they'll cap at 4K resolution. So 3840 by 2160p and 60 hertz. You will not be able to do 4K 120 since this isn't 120 hertz television. So this is what you can expect, whether it's a PlayStation or an Xbox. All right, and then here's some Fortnite footage you can see on the PlayStation 5 with the Fire TV. We're gonna move around, create a lot of movement and motion for you. But check that out, super fluid and responsive. Let's open up the parachute here. Dive down again. Look at the colors. Everything's really clear, crisp. Now we're going for a little drive. All right, let's get out. Send the car on its way. Colors look great. Check that out. This is too fun. Shooting saw blades. Look at that. But you can see everything looks really nice. Quality is top notch with our console and this TV. Overall, this is a great TV in regards to price to performance. And I'd argue if you're already a Fire TV user looking for this TV, maybe to upgrade or add additional TV around your house, this is gonna be the way to go. It just makes sense. Why not buy a TV from the brand that actually makes the operating system, right? So they designed the Fire TV OS, and you now have the Fire TV branded television. So Amazon knows what they're doing, what their system needs to perform best, and they definitely give you that with this setup. The voice remote is my favorite feature. The 4K resolution at 43 inches is great. I can't stress enough how good this TV looks. I'm afraid that this video didn't do it justice. The built-in speakers, I was blown away. I'm pleasantly surprised with the sound quality that we get coming out of this TV. They sound way better than your typical TVs, I would argue, from TCL, Insignia, brands along those lines at this price point. The base was actually existent, which I think's pretty cool. Great for next-gen consoles, gamings, that sort of thing. You can do it with a console or without if you want to download or buy some games directly from their app store. There's a lot of great features. The operating system's easy and simple to use. Now, with that being said, I still prefer Roku myself, just because the tile layout's better in my opinion. Basically, I think the Fire TV needs to redo the strip right here and make this larger. So basically swap this with this section down here and then maybe just populate a small portion of the screen with their advertisements, sponsor contents, things like that. This just gets really busy and clutter compared to some of the other TV operating systems, but it is fast, it's fluid, and it makes sense if you're a big Twitch user, Fire TV user, and Amazon customer.